Morning folks, here we're looking at 2020, uh, paper one, question one. So the first one here, fx equal to x squared plus 5x plus p, so a quadratic, um, where x is an element between minus 3 and 8. So the roots are going between minus 3 and 8, or the values of p, sorry, are between minus 3 and 8. Find the value for p for which x plus 3 is a factor. Now if this is a factor, that automatically implies, so if x plus 3 is a factor, that implies that x equal to minus 3 is your root. Once you know something's a root, sub it into the equation, and it's equal to 0. Because that is the point at where it cuts the x-axis. So here we have 0 is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 5 times minus 3 plus p. Tidy that up, 9 minus 15 plus p. And there we have 0 is equal to 9 minus 15 is minus 6 plus p. p is equal to 6. Alternatively, you could have done a long division into that. Um, it should work out to be the same. So that means my function in this part 1 of f of x equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now the next thing, find the value of p for which roots differ by 3. Now there's different ways you can do this. If you're looking at that function, 5x plus p, then the roots differ by 3, and that value of p actually goes between minus 3 and 8. Now, if you're just thinking of that quadratic, I was thinking all the roots there would be between minus 3 and 8. I can go minus 3, 0, differ by 3, minus 2 and 1, minus 1 and 2. 0, 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 4, 7, 5, 8. I've written down all of these. In a quadratic, you always say, what number multiplies to give me this and adds to give me this. So how can I get a 5 from any one of those? Now, if I'm skimming through those, the only way I can get a 5 added up is that. And it's a plus 5, so that means that my quadratic will be x squared plus 5x, well actually f of x is equal to x minus 1 and x minus 4, would that be right? If I tidy that up, or x plus 1, x plus 4, sorry, so it's there, x squared plus 4x plus 1x plus 4, f of x equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. So that means my value for p in that one is 4, because it's the number at the end. Maybe an easier way to do that is you're using your formula x squared or z squared a lot of the time you see, but I'll use x because it matches up very nicely to the bit at the top, matches up to this. x squared minus x times the sum of the roots plus the product equals to zero. Now here it says they differ by three. So if one root was x, the other root would be x plus three. So if I'm filling that in, x squared minus x times the sum of the roots, I get two x sum just means add together, two x plus three plus the product means I've multiplied them, x squared plus three x is equal to f of x. Tidy that up. Um, I want to match it up to this, so I want a plus sign there, ideally, x squared plus x, say, minus 2x minus 3, let's put that minus in, plus x squared plus 3x equals to f of x. Now match that up to your original expression, and here I have Ignoring the x, just matching up your coefficients, minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 5, minus 2x is equal to 5, plus oh, 3 is 8, x is equal to minus 4, and I'll use that into the next thing to work out p, because p is equal to all that, p is equal to x squared plus 3x, p is equal to x squared minus 4 squared plus 3 times minus 4, p is equal to 16 minus 12, p is equal to 4. Yeah, it's the same as what we got in both. That may be more foolproof. That was a wee bit watery. So going through your roots, see ones which differ by 3, 1 and 4. And also using the fact that we know how to solve the quadratic 
multiply to give me this and add to give me this and four and one worked out nicely. Now, third bit, find the two values of P for which the graph does not cross the x-axis. Now we can see it's a quadratic, it's a U-shape. So if it doesn't cross the x-axis, it's up in these two quadrants. Now you might remember from your nature of roots, if it doesn't cross the x-axis, the roots are imaginary. So B squared minus 4AC is less than zero. So my quadratic there is f of x equal to x squared plus 5x plus p. a is the coefficient or the number before x squared. p is the coefficient of x, the number before x and c is what the left of the end, or constants at the end. So b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. i squared minus 4 times 1 times p. 25 minus 4p less than 0. 4p is bigger than 25, bring her up here, 25 over 4, p is bigger than 25 over 4, which is what, 6 and a quarter, and if you look at the bits at the start, it says p is uh, bigger than minus 3, less than or equal to 8, so here, values that are bigger than 6.25, and they're integers, whole numbers, that means p must be 7, and p must be 8. You can do trial and error there as well, but it's a bit for three. And then the last one, find the range of values for which that. A modular equation, key thing it is, get your modular uh, function on one side and its own, and the numbers on the other. And then what do you do there? You square both sides. Square this out, square the first, 4x squared, multiply the two together, 5 times 2 is 10, and double it, 20x square the last, or write out that bracket twice. Bring that across, starting to look like your old friend, the quadratic. You divide across by four, and we'll let it equal to zero to find the roots. So you wanna get a wee picture on these ones. Multiply three and two, and then let's draw your quadratic, x equal to minus two, x equal to minus three, Minus two, minus three. I've got my U shape. There are roots. Linking into the first bit, there are factors. There's my roots. Now, the last place for U, I'd say at X squared. 4X squared plus 20X plus 24. Now, what does that mean? It means less than or equal to zero. I always say, what shape's that? It's a U. Where is that U less than or equal to zero? Is it less than or equal to zero here? No because the values of y are positive. It's less than or equal to zero all of there. In relation to minus three in the number line, what may x, what's happening to minus three? It's getting bigger and equal to minus three. In relation to minus two, we'll back the way, and get smaller and equal to minus two.